Hello everybody, this is Lara at pureelliotwave.com. I'm going to update my Elliott Wave and technical analysis with you for OMG on ESCO today. I did this a month ago. Before I jump into this, a quick reminder, I still have this free ebook on my website. If you go to my website, pureelliotwave.com, here's the home page. If you click on download ebook, you can get a free copy of a brief technical analysis ebook with, with some basics. Here's a description of the contents. We've got some information on trends, volumes, channels, trend lines, candlesticks, scale, and there's this two steps to a high probability trade setup I've written. So if that's for you, then uh, go to my website and get your free ebook download. Okay, let's get into this analysis of Amisco. I updated this just a month ago. Let's see what it's done. I think it's just gone sideways. I'm just checking the low here. 1.605246. Has it gone to a new low? 1.60799. So no, it hasn't. So the low remains intact and it's just gone sideways. So the wave count remains valid from a month ago. Mm, I remember this. Leading diagonal, not the most ideal look for primary wave one. Actually, I wonder if I could, I'm gonna do an alternate actually, that's because there's not a lot of Elliott wave work to do here, but I've just seen an alternate idea I wanna have a look at and see if that would be valid, at the weekly chart level. Okay, I, what if we had primary one over here do the wave, yes, the wavelengths for an expanding diagonal work. And then primary wave two could be a complete expanded flat. And now intermediate C needs to be a five wave structure. Does this fit? It does, if one would fit as a five wave structure at that low. But there's an overlap between this high and this low. So is that going to fit? So what's the difference here? This is my main wave count, let's expand this out. So we're focusing on primary waves one and two. I've got a leading diagonal for primary one, labeled intermediate one, two, three, four, five. It's expanding, it meets all Elliott wave rules. And then I've got intermediate two as a double zigzag, W, X, Y. It has a really nice fit as a double zigzag, doesn't it? It really looks quite good. X is an expanded flat, W is zigzag, and Y is a zigzag. So what's the difference between this weekly chart and this alternate idea? Well, the diagonal finishes earlier, it still meets Elliott wave rules. Wave 3 is longer than wave 1, wave 5 is longer than wave 3, wave 4 is longer than wave 2, and the trend lines are diverging. So those are the rules for an expanding diagonal. So if 1 is over there, 2 could be an expanded flat, A, B, C. And both A and B look like zigzags. Let's put some labels in there. A a zigzag and B a zigzag. Subdividing 535 with a short C wave and extended A wave. So the problem here, uh, so here primary two is already 0.94 the length of primary one, that's okay. I think for this idea I might wanna see a fourth wave completing and then I think I might want to see one and two over here and then three an impulse with one, two an expanded flat, four a zigzag. Okay, so the the point of considering this alternate is this would be immediately bearish. This would expect a fifth wave down at minor degree. And it would be invalidated with a new high above 4.829830. I'm going to put that in. One of the good things about doing alternate wave counts is if you can see as many wave counts as you can and then you rank them in order of probability, once you've eliminated, for example, all bearish counts and your bullish count is the only one left, you can have more confidence in it and vice versa. In this case, if I can eliminate this bearish count, I can have more confidence in my bullish count. So that's one way you can use alternates. That's how they're quite handy. Invalidation point's the same, so the risk is the same. So it's possible that we could see a fifth wave down. It's possible primary two might not be over. This actually has a slightly better look for the leading diagonal of primary wave one than this one. This fifth wave just looks so big here. 
but it does look like a pretty good three wave structure so that's okay here could still certainly be subdividing as a three as a zigzag okay so what's another way to tell if this is wrong you can put a little channel around intermediate C we'll go from one to three and a copy on two Elliot's first technique not the best channel I don't like this huge overshoot now that doesn't mean the channels not valid it just means it's not as conservative as I'd like I'll push this up here this is how we use the channel if the channel is breached by upward movement in the direction opposite to this downward trend a breach would tell us that this downward trend should be over and the next upward trend should be underway so that would be the first confidence point for a bullish scenario and after that a new high above 4.829830 would provide a lot more confidence in a bullish scenario because that would invalidate this bearish wave count. Let's calculate the length of B in relation to A. B is a 1.39 length of A. That's only slightly longer than the most common length of up to 1.38 and absolutely within an allowable range of up to twice the length of A. So that's acceptable and that's uh, pretty normal for an expanded flat. So B is actually quite long in relation to A. If minor 5 were to reach equality in length with 1 that would take us into negative territory so that won't work. Um, what if minor 5 reaches 0.382 the length of 1? Nope, that would still take us into neg negative territory. Okay, I'm just going to use this lower trend line for support to indicate when this is over and a breach of the trend line to indicate a trend change. Let's look at some technical analysis now and see which of those two wave counts we want to have more confidence in. Squish this up and... My technical analysis for Amisco is going to be pretty much the same as when I looked at it last time because it hasn't changed, it's just gone sideways. Okay, at the low here there is a piercing pattern, this is a bullish piercing pattern, it doesn't have support from volume. ADX reached extreme but not very extreme. Uh, the volume profile is bullish, volume is actively pushing price higher particularly on this session. The session had a long upper wick though, this might be a shooting star, if that wick is twice the length of the real body it would be a shooting star. Coming in the context of a short upward trend that's a bearish reversal signal so it's unsurprising we're getting downward movement. It looks like uh, there may be a bullish candlestick pattern and a morning doji star unfolding but this candlestick would need to close well into the real body of this candlestick for that to be considered bullish and I don't think that session's over yet so it's incomplete. There's some bullishness off the low, on balance volume is making new highs with price and would have bro broken above resistance, let's put a little trend line in there we can add a trend line here on balance volume would have broken above resistance on this session here that would have been a really useful bullish signal on this session and prices moved higher and that's a reasonably significant break above resistance because this resistance line is multiple tested and not too long held it's short and it's close to horizontal uh, at the moment ADX is declining, the negative DX lines just crossed above the positive. ADX is at reasonably low levels, it's below 20. No clear trend indicated at this time frame. It had mm, just caught up with a possible new upward trend a few days ago, but these two downward sessions have now brought the ADX line down. RSI is neutral, it reached oversold at the low and there exhibited some quite strong bullish divergence with price. Let's expand that out. That looks pretty good. So that's bullish. The candlestick looks bullish. Volume is now bullish. ATR showing a little bit of an increase as price starts to rise here. So that's a little bit bullish. Stochastics neutral. Money flow index neutral. Okay, on balance, particularly considering the depth of this bear market for primary two, I think this is probably a better, more likely wave count. I'd put more weight on that than on this wave count, but I wanted to try and come up with an alternate for you today to illustrate risk and to try and give you an idea if it does go lower, how low would it go, and what would we look for to finally indicate a low is in place and is sustainable. 
Okay, thank you all so much for watching. Um, again, I appreciate all your support, and don't forget if you want a free technical analysis ebook, you can go and get the download from my website.